So one of the most important concepts in your nursing school education um, are electrolyte imbalances. So what is an electrolyte? Very simply, it's really just an ionic compound and we need them in our body um, because they perform a wide variety of nerve and muscle functions. Um, so one of the biggest, I would say most important places we see it is in what's known as the sodium potassium pump. This has a like serious, this can seriously negatively impact um, cardiac function. So there's all kinds of electrolytes and you know, as a nursing student and as a nurse, it's a lot more about, you know, you can't just know the reference range um, for a specific level like sodium. You have to really understand how this plays out in terms of, you know, the patient's lab work and how it's going to impact um, a potential disease process um, and, what, and what can be seen clinically. It's very important to know. So we're gonna start with sodium. So the normal range for this is 135 to 145 milliequivalents per liter. Um, so hypernatremia is a sodium level that's greater than 145. This can be caused from a variety of factors such as diabetes insipidus, which Pretty simply, it's just a pathology where you drink way too much water and you urinate a ton. Um, dehydration, um, which can be caused from fever, vomiting, diarrhea, diaphoresis, which is just like intense sweating, um, extensive exercise, exposures of long duration to environmental heat, and uh, Cushing syndrome, which that's um, an uh, endocrine disorder. So the signs and symptoms here, um, among others, include agitation, thirst, restlessness, dry mucous membranes, edema, confusion, and in more severe cases, seizures and coma. So one of the ways I love to remember um, the most detrimental effects of sodium imbalances are when you look at sodium on the periodic table, it's Na. So you think of the N and you think to associate it with neuro. It has these neuro effects, right? So, you know, potential seizures, um, that's neuroactivity, coma. So the treatment for this, um, like other electrolyte disorders, includes the correction and management of any of the underlying causes and dietary sodium restrictions. It is important to note that a rapid reduction of sodium in the body can lead to the rapid flow of water, which can result in cerebral edema. So, you know, swelling of the brain and permanent brain damage, which is often referred to as central pontinemolysis and even death. I have never heard of that specific condition, but um, yes, yeah, cerebral edema is, uh, fatal or can be fatal. Um, so hyponatremia is a sodium level of less than 135. Um, this can be a result from syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, um, also known as SIADH. Um, that's kind of like the opposite of diabetes insipidus, to put it simply. Um, some medications like diuretics, some antidepressants, um, mainly lithium, which is actually a mood stabilizer, but that's for pharmacology. Um, yes, so there's water intoxication, which is rare, but that can be fatal, just drinking way too much water. Um, and there are different diseases, um, specifically like within the endocrine functions like uh, of the thyroid gland, um, cirrhosis, which impacts the liver, that can also cause this, uh, renal failure, heart failure, pneumonia, um, Addison's disease, which is also kind of like opposite of Cushing's, which I had mentioned with hypernatremia. And 
severe dieting, diarrhea, vomiting, um, and cerebral disorders. So the signs and symptoms here are confusion, vomiting, seizures, muscle weakness, nausea, headaches, loss of energy, fatigue, and restlessness and irritability. Um, you know, so again, you can have seizures on the opposite end. I like to think of, um, you know, like with the lethargy too, that being associated with neuro. Um, so the treatments, again, fixing the underlying causes, um, diuretic medications, you want to like put an end to that, um, fluid restrictions, intravenous sodium, and if Addison's disease is the cause, then hormone replacement might be um, necessary.